Hello everyone, welcome back to Sigma TV Africa. Today joining me is Mr. Adeleye Awakan. He's on top of things when it comes to the gaming industry. He is a consultant, he's a marketing strategist, he's an author, a freelancer, a content writer for ePlay Africa. Please help me to welcome Mr. Adeleye. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Charity. I really appreciate for the introduction. Um, I really appreciate to be here to welcome uh, to be on Sigma TV interview today. I really appreciate. Thank you very much. I want to ask, um, how did you get into the gaming? What's gaming like in Nigeria, and what are some of the challenges uh, gaming industry is facing in Nigeria? Yes, thank you very much, Charity. And um, like you said during the introduction, I've had so many experience in the industry and let me just put it this way. I started off as a uh, agent, as a shop agent with Narabet. So my journey has been a roller coaster. From there, I diverged into the media aspects of the gaming industry through a friend, like a brother to me. So from there, I, we discovered there are some vacuum in the media aspect terms of dissemination of information about gaming industry. So we decided to take it from there and look at areas how we can disseminate more information about the industry in Africa. So that's how I got into the gaming industry and that's how I got into the B2B, the B2B aspect of the gaming industry. So from there, I picked up the passion to write about the industry, look at the challenges and some of the things, you know, put, uh, investors and entrepreneurs outside Africa who were interested to invest into Africa would I was able to write more on it and look at other areas to improve with my content on the gaming industry in Africa. Good. Well, uh, that's like a, that's an inspiring story that you just said. But you said that you were working, you started as an agent. Um, do, do you mean that you used to be like uh, you would get a big brand and then you open like those small outlets, those shops in different parts of like some, you make it more decentralized. Is that what you did when you say you were an agent? Yes, actually, that was what I did when I started off with Neverbet. I had shops with Neverbet. I opened outlets like Lagos specifically. I have like four or five shops. So I'm, I'm the head then. So that is how I started as a as a shop agent owner. So I was doing the retail aspect of the gaming industry for Mega Bits back then. So from there I metaphors into the B2B aspect through a friend that introduced me because it is into the media aspect of the gaming. So we realized there are some vacuum in the information, dissemination of information about the African gaming industry in Africa. So we took it upon ourselves to write more on the industry in Africa, the same name, because we know there are limited information about Africa. So we need to do a lot of research and write more on the industry. So that's how I developed the passion and the whole aspect of me writing content now for EP Africa and other media outlets, also for the B2C and B2B aspect of the industry. Good for you for spotting the gap and doing something about it. So now let me ask you, so let's say there are companies that are already established in other parts of the world, right? And are now looking to expand uh, into the Nigerian market since it's one, since it's one of the biggest uh, market in Africa. Is there space for them to enter? Is, the, is it something that uh, it's un encouraged by the Nigerian government? Yes, actually, Nigeria, let me just say, Nigeria, after Ghana, when it comes to Libra in terms of gaming, Nigeria is second to Libra country in Africa when it comes to gaming. So Nigeria is a Libra country that allows all kinds of gaming the gaming investors, companies to come into European gaming. Liberal, what do you mean liberal? Like, is it free for anyone? Is yeah. it... Um... Yes, it's, is it regulated when you say liberal? Yes, what I mean by liberal, I mean in the aspect whereby it is, it is the regulators are open and there to welcome any companies interested in investing in the Nigerian gaming industry. So they are always welcoming you. So uh, Nigeria, for me, it's still untapped. 
when you look at the population and the growing population in Nigeria today, and by 20, by 2100, one in three people on the planet will be in Africa. And I'm, I'm very sure Nigeria will take a huge chunk of the population coming down by, 20, by 2100 in Africa, in the world. So it's, it's, it's still on top in Nigeria and the industry is growing and specifically the spot betting industry. So let me just put it away. Nigeria is one of the top markets you can always think of investing when it comes to spot betting. And the way it's growing is growing at a huge pace. We've started seeing regulators in countries such as Ghana, even the UK, uh, I, just to name a few, are now preventing celebrities, football stars, influencers from being endorsed by betting brands. They claim that there are dangers that under 18s will be lured into gaming. Will such move really prevent 18-year-olds from betting? And also, uh, we see brand experts like Jesse uh, in Ghana. He's, refused, he's refuting such claim that uh, advising game, he's advising the Gaming Commission in Ghana to instead use influencers, celebrities, to rather promote positive side of gaming is this a viable solution to preventing is this a solution do you think um, banning celebrities from endorsing betting brand what's what's your take on this yeah thank you charity thank you for this question uh it's 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 interesting when you said uh, uh influencers we we we, we influence uh, on diet gambling Yes, actually, to some extent, it will influence. But I think that is not the solution. From my own perspective, the solution to this, to underage gambling, I think it has to do with the regulators have to put some measures in place for operators to look into. Like in the areas of KYC, you know, for example, in Africa, let me just say, most operators, most regulators don't instigate uh, getting companies to, to, to be to be active with their KYC when it comes to knowing your customer in terms of the, the documentation that they present before registering online. And like we said, most uh, identification that most people present when it comes to uh, online betting companies is not enough to determine if this person is underage or not. So from my own perspective, I think the regulator should just look into way of mandating the uh, operators to make sure that KYC is is up to standard to determine the age bracket of who is registering online. So I believe that is just my own aspect, which I think the regulators should look into. Fine, the, the influencers will influence, no doubt about that, but the KYC matters. It has to, has to, it has to boil down to the KYC. The regulators have the work to do, the bookmakers also have the work to do. So that is my own opinion on that area. Very good insight. So you think the regulators should beef up the uh, regulation requirements before anyone, any punters can gamble online. This is your, uh, that's interesting position take on this. So just last week, I don't know if you saw this, we saw in the news, in headline news, that government in Zambia are complaining about the black market that is plaguing the industry, which robs the state of generating revenue. Uh, we have also seen something similar in Nigeria, where Kaduna State went clamping down on illegal gaming outlets. I would like to know, has the situation gotten better in Nigeria? What's, what's the situation like currently? Yes, in the situation currently, you know, uh, the Kaduna State, like you said, the Kaduna State uh, clamping down on illegal gambling without paying the necessary tax and as well. The Cardinal State has a has a regulatory as their own tax body. You know, in Nigeria, the, the 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 gaming industry, you know, when you get a license from the federal, you have the opportunity to operate all across states in Nigeria in terms of retail. But except for legal states. Legal state has its own regulatory body that will tell you if you want to operate the retail aspects in my state, you have to get our license. So, for example, the Kaduna State, Kaduna State doesn't have a regulatory body, but they've gotten a tax system, a tax body 
that clamps down on any companies or that is running retail or any aspect of business in that country, you have to pay tax to the state. So it's more like in all states. It just has to do with in terms of how the uh, the government, the state body implements this whole thing. So for Kaduna State, they have they have a strong tax body, which clamp down on anybody who is not ready to pay tax. So I believe it's not something new. So it's something the, the state government have taken upon themselves to, to implement. That's why they are clamping down some of these betting companies like Bet Niger, opening shops in Kaduna. You have to pay tax. You have to register with us. So you've gotten the license, no doubt, but you have to pay tax in the state you are operating, which is virtually is happening in all states in Nigeria. So, I agree that uh, the 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 government should clamp down on any outlet that is not following the rules properly. Obviously, that will rob the states from some re any revenue, which will go back to the state anyway. Uh, but another thing, you just interesting thing that you just mentioned that I find I'm just learning myself now. You're saying that being that Nigeria is a federal state. When you get a federal license, you are allowed to operate in every state, in various states, unless apart from Lagos State. That's something interesting that I've just learned. I didn't know that. that is, so that's the case. Yes, that is actually the case. You know, Lagos State... What makes Lagos special? What makes Lagos special? Why is Lagos different? Uh, Lagos, Lagos, <laughs> Lagos, uh, Lagos is, the, is the biggest and is the hub of gaming in Africa. In, let me just say Africa as... Nigeria, and is one of the fastest growing states in in Nigeria when it comes to gaming. They are the first, and they've gotten huge potentials when it comes to population. The GDP in Lagos about 132 billion USD, and so it makes Lagos stand out among all other states. So in terms of sizes and in terms of all atmosphere, Lagos is just top notch. So. And Lagos has a very strong regulatory body that clamps down on any operators that want to come into their state to operate the retail, even online. I think they are even doing everything possible to to call people from from targeted players in Lagos State. So Lagos is just a, is a, a body on its own. Let me just put it that way. To, to be honest, I'm not that surprised because Lagos happens to be like the, where, this is where everything happens in Lagos. It's like when you compare it to, it's like the New York of, of Nigeria or the California of Nigeria. So they kind of have that leverage, that power to kind of dictate what they want for themselves rather than the, the federal government dictating um, for them. Of course. So, yeah. So let me ask you, we know that as a result of this pandemic, we're now seeing businesses making the move from operating face to face to now going online or they risk dying out. But then again, we know that not everyone can afford the cost of Internet data in Africa because prices are astronomical. It's expensive. Who should solve this problem and how are operators going to tackle this problem in Nigeria, in Africa as a whole? Yes, it's a it's an interesting question. And, and since the pandemic, you know, the pandemic accelerated online in Africa and it, it, it's whereby businesses were recalibrating their operations to online. So many operations were taken online and it's 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 more it's more like I think the best solution to this is operators we need to go into a partnership. I think partnership is the key to such issues. In terms of expensive data for players, I think operators should just please please explain what you mean by partnership because I think partnership with who please I want to learn yeah, as we're, yeah. we're doing this as yeah, well. Yeah, bookmakers need to partner with telecos company. Because I've I have the privilege of some companies. like fintech to partner with fintech companies. Not actually fintech. Is Tele it? Telecos telecommunication no. company that's that okay. provide data. Okay. Telecommunication company okay. that provide data. Just like you know, a situation where by Petway, for example, Petway in Nigeria, they offer free yes. they offer free mode version. 
for players to oh, okay. for players to be able to play but even without data. So it's sounds good. Yes. Even if you don't have a data on your mobile phone, you can use the free mode version to place bets. So, and I also have OD bets in Kenya. They are also offering such service to their players, to their customers. Customers can place, place bets without data. So it just has to do with partnership with telecos company offering data to these players, offering internet service to these players. Partner with them. It's always the easy way forward to solve such issues when it comes to internet cost and data in Africa as a whole. So, yeah, interesting. So there is actually a solution to this. And maybe, like you mentioned, one of the ways going forward, operators uh, can offer uh, free, data-free uh, websites or apps that they can still go and place their bet at no cost to them, the, the players now. And uh, this will still go through to the operator and they can still do businesses and work fine. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that sounds that's a, like a very good solution to this problem that we're currently facing. Yes. Small. So let me ask you, yes, go on. Go it's on. more of like a free mode version for players. To a free mode version. Yes. Okay. Yes. On your mobile phone, you can still get with it. Even with that, that, that.